going to take this the distance. He throws it toward the end zone. Oregon football with Mike Bellotti. Here's Fife and back to throw. Two quick steps. Now throws the long high fade down to Sammy. He's got it. He dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Sammy Parker. And hello, everyone. Welcome to Oregon football with Mike Bellotti, Sammy Parker with a fantastic day leading Oregon to their second win of the season. Joe Johnsante along with head coach Mike Bellotti. What can you say? Your playmaker did it again. He did, and Sammy had a great day, a lot of respects, and a great football game because he contributed on special teams as well as running the football. We had a lot of big plays in this game, not as consistent as I would like. Uh, I thought our defense actually played very well at times. Certainly in the first half, we're dominant. But again, we've got to clean up some, some penalties on special teams and just some sloppy play on special teams that you know we're getting called for. I don't see them, mm -hmm. but you know, they're being called. Well, again, a pretty good lead, a 17-point lead, and uh, Nevada, give them a lot of credit. They really fought and they came back hard. Are you concerned at all about the ability of your team to maybe put teams like this away? Well, I, I think one thing is that they changed quarterbacks, a more, more, a more mobile quarterback in the second half, and they moved the pocket a lot more. We had, they had tried to drop back in the first half, and we had dominated play. And we really didn't have to cover very much. We got fooled by some play action in the second half, which is a frustration, but it's something we can learn from. And I think we actually did play better pass defense this game, significantly better than we had the first game. And Justin Finnessy got a start. We'll see all the highlights, and you'll be able to see that. But uh, were you pleased with how he played? They didn't really throw at Stephen Moore that much after his interception. No, I, I thought... Uh, Justin Finnessy played very well at corner. He's got some things to learn. It's the first really full game he's played. He made some plays. He got beat once or twice. And, and again, it's just some technique and footwork skills. I also thought Kenny Washington came on and did a great job for us in the end of the game, was our leading rusher in that regard, and, and really uh, showed a spark. I mean, did some things that we really needed at that point in time. And generally not as efficient at quarterback as a week ago, but still got the job done. Yeah, and I think that that may be misleading some. I, I actually thought we threw some very, very good passes. I think that uh, Kellen Clemens' last three or four uh, balls that he threw were really right on target. We didn't complete them. We dropped about four passes on the day, which mm -hmm. unfortunately cost us a lot because they were some big play potential. Uh, we didn't run the option as well. And again, they did a great job of defending the option. That's got to be part of our tax. We've got to look at some things down the road. Well, let's go ahead and jump into the highlights. First quarter action, Oregon, the 2003 home opener at Austin Stadium. Pack us Thunder Green. I like them. Yeah, I, I, you know, again, we're giving a little showcase to all these uniforms. We'll start mixing the matching after a while, and then we'll really get people excited. Ducks pick it up here in the first quarter. Clemens for 13 yards to Demetrius Williams. And right away, the Ducks go deep into the playbook. Nevada. That five-man front now. Pitch and go to Shaw going right in the end around. A reverse. Here comes Sammy, and he's got blockers and room. 45-50. And a 45 with a 40 with a block. 30 down the sideline. One man to beat. Cuts in and tripped across the 15-yard line. Great job. Great play call. We had been running some toss sweeps a lot. The first game showed the same look this time. Uh, reverse the ball. Nice handoff from Ryan to Sammy. Sammy makes the first guy miss and picks up a convoy of blockers down the field including Kellen Clemens, the quarterback. You see Je uh, Dan Weaver there. I keep seeing Jed all the time all my life here. But again, great job here, Sammy. Just tripped up right here trying to duck under that tackle. Sammy Parker, 50 yards on the carry, starting a huge day to the Nevada 13-yard line. And then Clemens trying to run the option for four yards. Then on third and six, Clemens again, this time for just another four. Yeah, and again, it, they did a nice job in pass defense. Kellen kept back. Should have probably just got up the field there. I don't want to see that down there as much. I want to go north and south, forced to kick a field goal. Jared Siegel in for the 22-yarder. It is good. 3-0 Oregon with the lead, so you score right out of the shoot again. It's a great way to start the game. It is. It's nice to get something on the board the first drive. I think it just it's something that we're used to, and we feel like, all right, that sets a the tone. They come out throwing the ball to live wise for 16 yards. But then they go to a reverse. Jerry Matson made a great play on this reverse. He does make a great play. They had a chance here. He's out there and only gets him, gets the guy down for a big loss. We had a zone blitz coming. Nice call by Coach Aliotti and his defense. More like it. Here's the quick pass to the right. The slant in is intercepted. Stevie Moore's got it, and he's still on his feet. Trying to get it outside. He'll be pulled down inside to the 45. He'll go to the 44-yard line. Nice job by our defense here. Uh, we have throw the ball just a little higher than he wants to. Stevie Moore is inside position playing great defense. Ball thrown right to him over the top. Nice job. Getting positive yards. He can control the football. They didn't throw 
Stephen Moore's way very much after that in this football game. Ducks go right to work again. Here's Kellen Clemens with Shaw and Floberg behind him, split apart. Back to throw. Clemens steps up, a lot of room. He can run it, but he'll throw wide open. The catch made. Sammy Parker, nobody near him. Ten. Pulls up, pulls inside of the five and down to the five yard line. Sammy's almost too fast for his shoes sometimes. You see him, he's got to get used to this surface. We probably need to practice on it more often because I still see us slipping more than I want to. Again, great job, great pass protection allows Kellen to step up by time for Sammy on the crossing route. Nice job here ducking, making the first guy miss. Just got to protect the ball when we do the stop and start. 38 yards down to the six yard line. Clemens on this play sacked for a five yard loss to the Nevada 11 yard line. They put some good pressure on Clemens. Uh, especially later in the football game, but that's when Oregon's other outside threat reaches the end zone. He's going to go back, set up the throw, steps up, looks, and finds Demetrius Williams open, touchdown. Nice job here again. Good protection allows Kellen to step up in the pocket. Uh, they hold our tight end, Tim Day, and that's the penalty flag you see flying through the air. They just grab him flying a scrimmage, don't let him get off, but that allows us a sort of a big log jam for Demetrius to come underneath get the ball untouched in the end zone. He's playing very well for it. He didn't get a lot of catches yesterday, but very solid. No, and he made some great catches. The first catch that we saw was a, was a great catch, not an easy one. At this point, Nevada doing nothing on offense. Down 10-0, roll for a loss of one. Your defensive line, I thought, played a very good game. They played awesome. They really did control the line of scrimmage early, both via the run and the pass. Great pressure right there, Devin Long coming in. Uh, nice job of uh, we put two guys on the tackle. Devin came inside. The other guy faked and went back out. He had nothing to do. Good job, Chris Salamona. Played a real solid game. Very pleased with his development. Two consecutive sacks. They have to punt. They had 18 total yards in the first quarter. Ducks back with it. Clemens this time. They get a sack of their own. Loss of eight. They yeah. got to the quarterback a little more than a week ago. 55, George Cordova is a great football player. He was tough to block one-on-one. -on -one. Great catch again there by Sammy. Kellen, again, coming out early, some of his, his uh, bullet throws were a little bit low. I don't know if that's playing on the crown. We didn't play on the crown last week. I'm not really sure. Good job of scrambling. Again, uh, they broke down our pocket a couple. They did a nice job in coverage is really what happened. Very first, uh, fast first quarter comes to a close. 128 yards of total offense in that quarter for your team. And <laughs> you'll take that any game. 128, that's a lot of offense for a quarter. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I felt good. We, we had some big plays. We hit them really hard and strong. Defense was playing very, very well. We had Our special teams hadn't been tested yet. And do you ever worry about a little bit of a letdown when you jump out to a lead like that? Uh, you know, but I think, you know, when you do that in the first couple of series, you score every time. Obviously, you can either keep doing it or you're going to feel like you drop off a little bit. So I think we have to just be ready if we do it to keep it going. All right, coming up, more Sammy Parker. Another fantastic day for Oregon's number one playmaker as Oregon extends the lead in the second quarter in their new Thunder Green. I think it looks pretty good. Back after this as we take a look at some more new uniforms. The Oregon cheerleaders looking sharp in the new duds as well. Wait till you see the band, everyone. We're back with second quarter action after this. Welcome back, everyone. Second quarter, Oregon leading this one 10 to nothing and uh, going into a very good second quarter for the Ducks. Still clicking on all cylinders offensively as we go to those highlights. And, Coach, you must be feeling very good about things right now. The crowd making a little bit of noise. Maybe they got quiet later in the game, but you had a lead. I, I thought the crowd did a good job. It's hard to keep them excited sometimes. But, again, we made some big plays. Nice sack there by Finnessy. And then get the crowd off the feet. Another look at it, second week in a row, you come on this corner blitz from the back side and you get a big play out of it. Yeah, and our corners are getting home and they're getting, you know, either knocking the ball or getting shot on the quarterback, which we like. So it's third and 12 after that play with Justin Finnessy getting the sack. So here comes Devin Long. Coach, that's four sacks in the last six Nevada plays. It's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, we, we were, again, mixing up what we did. Uh, again, little line games and loop stunts, and again, it's just getting people home free. Devin Long off to a very good start this season, isn't he? He's, doing, he's a playmaker. He's doing a nice job. He's tough to handle one-on-one. -on -one. So they punt. Jason Fife comes in to run the offense now in the second quarter with a good end result. Picks up just one yard here on the option. A little stutter step there. Then on third and seven, that's what you expect out of a veteran. He gets a first down on a scramble. Yeah, did a nice job. And again, Jason is a very quality running back. I mean, he really is. He can run very well. He's strong, and he's got a sense of where the, the flag is. So Fife does take another look at it, Coach. Pretty big play here. Yeah, it, it's again, the, the passing lanes are, are bogged up down the field. He steps up, looks, sees this, comes out, feels a crack, 
and then gets to the sideline and, and eyes that first down marker to make sure that he gets it. You see him sort of pushing and falling through, making sure he gets the yardage. Without that play, this play doesn't happen. And from the Nevada 43-yard line, here's Fife and back to throw. Two quick steps, now throws the long, high fade down to Sammy. He's got it. He dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Sammy Parker. Great job here. Probably the best thrown pass of the day. And, and a quick pass that they're come up in bump coverage, so it converts, obviously, to a what we call a fade. And it's perfectly thrown ball. Hits Sammy right on stride. Nice arc to it. Hits him on stride. As I say, he didn't have to break stride. And that allows him to get into that end zone. Great job. Great execution. 17 to 0. Looks a little like last week at this point. Ducks uh, doing a great job scoring on some big plays. But the Wolfpack still having trouble on offense. Ducks playing great defensively. Kretschmer, no gain. Igor in there. Yeah, again, we we're controlling the line of scrimmage with a defensive line, not allowing the running lanes to open and putting pressure on the quarterback the entire time. Row incomplete there. A lot of incompletions early. They were not good until they really changed their quarterbacks, Coach. Row incomplete, but a lot of great pressure. Yeah, I agree. We're in good coverage, in good situation. Always had a hand in his face, uh, pressure in the quarterback. They have to punt, Coach. We put this in so you could talk about uh, a lot of penalties on special teams. I know you want to clean that up. Yeah, and again, I unfortunately, I can't find two of the reasons that they were called. I, I think our kids are doing a good job, and we're going to have to look at what we're teaching because obviously uh, at this point they're calling holding or blocking the back, and I can't find it on the film. And I'm not saying the official's wrong. I'm just saying we have to look at it very closely. So ball back to the 12-yard line. Terrence Whitehead in the game. He picks up 14 yards, best rush of the day, and comes back with another 12. How's he doing with his ribs, Coach? Ribs are sore, and they're probably going to be sore for a while, and those things don't go away in a week, and every time you get hit on them, they're, they're more uh, uncomfortable. Five to Parker for nine yards, and then Whitehead going to take it ahead for three, but there's a holding penalty. So difficult to overcome penalties any time in any football game. Yeah, th again, those are frustrating. We actually improved from 13 penalties to nine. That might be moderate improvement, but it's something that we're going to talk about. Third and 13 after the holding. Everyone covered. It's a gain of four. So Oregon had to punt the ball. Two penalties on that drive. That's what really ended that one. So Nevada takes over deep in their own territory. Paul Martinez did a great job. We'll talk more about him. We'll see some uh, great punts in a little bit. Stop him here. No gain. Face match penalty, though, starts out this drive for them. Yeah, and unfortunately, we have them deep in the hole, and, and they get out uh, with the face mask penalty, then this uh, bootleg pass uh, that we did not defend very well. They come back and do a couple things, catch us in one-on-one -on -one coverage right there, trying to punch the ball out. So they're making some plays coming down the field. That was a 33-yard pass to the 27, then Heiser to Flowers for 27 yards, and just like that, touchdown, Nevada, and Justin Finnessy just fell down on that play. Yeah, he slipped, and, and again, uh, obviously, one misstep against a good receiver, and you can be in trouble. Three straight incompletions for Oregon, three straight for Nevada. Oregon gets the ball back with 31 seconds of their own 45. Incomplete to Parker, so you're working to try and score here. Yeah, that was almost a disastrous throw, though. They hit their safety right in the hands. A nice job here by Kellen Taylor, battling for yards and getting out of bounds to stop the clock. Five yards out of bounds. Here's Clemens on third down to Parker for 11 to the 39-yard line with 12 seconds left. Forget Here's setting up the field goal. Steps up to a big pocket, way downfield. He's got Sammy. He's got it for the touchdown. Well, this was actually a design play, and we talked about we could have two plays, either set up a field goal, but we, had, we knew we had two plays left. We had a timeout. We had enough timeouts. In fact, I think we didn't use any the entire time. But this is a great job of protection, great job of stepping up in the pocket, waiting for this route to develop. Sammy makes a great move, leaves the safety, and is wide open. And a perfect throw on the yes. run. Kellen showed that he's uh, been able to do that very well as we take another look at it from field level. And when the offensive linemen do such a good job on protection and Kellen can really see the field, that's just a huge thing. Yeah, it is. That, that's, uh, he's comfortable throwing on the run, comfortable mm -hmm. throwing on the move. And again, he, we have to establish visual lanes for him, just like any quarterback, because he does a very good job. Parker, big numbers. Six for 149 in the first half, two touchdowns, 50 yards rushing. That's amazing. That's uh, about two-thirds of the offense in the first half. 300 yards of total offense, though, for your team. They haven't done anything, and uh, you go to the locker room 24-7. Pretty good day's work uh, at <laughs> halftime. And, mm -hmm. I, and I talked with the team, though, about penalties I wasn't happy about, the loss of momentum, loss of focus on that one defensive drive that allowed them to score the touchdown. Glad that we got the momentum back with our last effort, but still felt like 
we weren't as consistent as I would like. We're doing a great job on defense. I really felt like that. But we need to step it up on offense, be a little bit more consistent. You can't live by the big plays because they can also get you in the end. And ultimately, the defense played great in the second half and even put some points on the board that um, might have been the difference in the football game. All right, coming up, a special weekend for anyone who has worn the green and yellow, whatever shade it may have been when they played. The Letterman welcomed home back to Austin to dedicate the new stadium. We'll have that, our football flashback, and more as we head to halftime. He's not a football letterman. Oregon with the lead 24-7 when we return. Welcome back to the show, everyone. It was a very special weekend here at the Athletic Complex, and that's because Oregon invited back every single letterman in the history of Oregon football to share in the rededication of Austin Stadium. Several of the guys got together for a dinner on Friday night, a chance to catch up on old times, kind of like a reunion. They also got the grand tour of the facilities the Ducks have put together, spent some time in the locker room, and speaking of that, when was the last time the locker room was nice enough for a cocktail party? Anyway, the 200 returning lettermen were also honored at Austin Stadium before the game and with a special video produced here at Chambers Communications celebrating the 100-year history of Oregon football. They also got a sneak peek of the brand new Duck Vision Open, which recapped Oregon's bowl wins in the modern era, and then took on a new twist on the biggest play in the history of Oregon football. Hewer, you're going to go back to throw the ball. Sets up, looks, throws toward the corner of the end zone. It is intercepted! Intercepted! The Ducks have the ball! 10 to the 35, the 40. Kenny Wayne's going to score! Kenny Wayne's going to score! Wayne! That's him! Touchdown! Kenny Wayne! All right, great time certainly had by all in the best ever rendition of the Kenny Wheaton play for Duck Vision. Now, that brings us to this week's internet poll. But first, the results from one week ago. We asked all of you, which conference would you most like to see Oregon schedule games with in the future? And most of you said the Big 12 conference. Games against Colorado or Texas could be in the offing. The Big 10 is next. Remember Oregon with Michigan this year, Indiana next. And a future series with Purdue already set. Hardly anyone wants to play the Mountain West team, but we will when we head to Utah later this season. This week's question, who was the greatest player in Oregon history? Bobby Moore, of course, Ahmad Rashad, Jack Crabtree, Joey Harrington. Was it Norm, Billy Musgrave, Danny Fouch, George Shaw, or Kenny Wheaton? Place your vote at KZI.com. Click on the OSN link, and of course, we'll have the results next week on Oregon Football with Mike Pilati. Now, this weekend was not just for the greats, but for all the lettermen to share the stories about the good old days and share in Oregon's current success. Many of them shocked at the facilities, mainly that $3.2 million locker room. Players like NFL Hall of Famer Dave Wilcox remember the locker facilities a bit differently when they played over at Hayward Field. And that's where we go for a very special edition of our football flashback. Anyhow, you'd, you'd dress there and you'd walk down, cross, and go to Hayward Field. And then at halftime, you'd stay down there, play the game at halftime. You, you, there wasn't like a locker room stuff, there was a, a maintenance room and uh, at that time all the coaches smoked. Well we go in this room and there's like gas cans and the lawnmower and you know edge, hedge trimmers sitting there it's a, and so we're there smoking and they gave us salt tablets and oranges. See at that time you didn't drink a lot of water, it was not good to drink a lot of water and, but you took a lot of salt tablets. You know, probably two worst things in the world you can do today. But I don't remember guys dying. Maybe. <laughs> All right, coming up, it's back to the action. Ducks end up in a battle with the Wolf Pack, and their unbeaten streak in home openers is at stake. More Oregon football with Mike Pilotti right after this. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Get ready for some third quarter action here now. Oregon leading Nevada 24 to 7. And uh, Coach, this third quarter turned into a pretty good dogfight. They started to play some good defense and, and uh, moving the ball as well. Yeah, and our offense didn't get too serious on the field due to the fumble on the punt and the interception. So it took away a little momentum we had. Four for Kressmer here, Mitchell on the stop. And then Kressmer for five more on second and 11. They have to punt it right away, but. Coach, after this, this turns into a really big play in this game. You take this away, and I'm not sure the game is ever close. 
bad punt and they get rewarded with it. Right, and I agree. And it's one of those things that happens. You know, the ball touches our player. He's blocking, not blocked into it. It's a wild scramble for the ball. We need to communicate better. We have a poison call that tells everybody the ball's on the ground. You've got to get away. We just couldn't hear it and didn't get it accomplished. Take another look at it. And uh, the rule is if you get pushed into the ball, then it's not exactly a fumble, That's right? That's correct. If, if you get pushed and blocked into it, the, the official can overrule it. But he was blocking. We should have caught the ball. The easiest way is just fair catch, go up and fair catch the ball. Such a short punt, too, and so it's tough to see them get rewarded with that. But they keep the ball with a little life after the turnover. And Kreshmer had 13 yards, and then Heiser the Flowers for eight yards after an Oregon holding penalty, and then into the end zone on the rollout for the touchdown. Yeah, and again, the same play they got us earlier with uh, play action, and we're, we'll spend a lot of time figuring out how to defend that. Now, instead of a three and out, they make it 24-14, and it's a ball game. Duck offense stalling a little bit at this point. Teams trade three and outs. There were 21 punts in this game, and then Clemens to Parker for 13 yards, and then Clemens incomplete on this next pass. A little over, a little over the top. Yeah, a little tough, but you know, I, I think Sammy could be. I think Sammy got worn down a little bit in the course of this game, the big first half a little bit. Uh, pretty good job they're running by Terrence Whitehead, even despite his sore ribs. And after the game, you said too many second and tens. It was a pickup of four on second and ten, and then Clemens just can't get the first down. Yeah, we were not as efficient on first down. We either threw incomplete or got zero in the running game, and, and second and ten is tough. It, it's the defensive down then. Paul Martinez looked like a veteran, down at the two-yard line. Give him an assist for what happened next, Coach. Well, I think we had four punts down inside the five-yard line. I mean, it was awesome performance, and he grew as a punter on that day. Played a great game. Heiser incomplete here. Crowd starting to bring it now. Defense with a backbreaker. Solomona saying, bring it on. Bring that noise. Here's Heiser, third and ten at his own two. For the ball, straight drop back to throw. Swings it out. It is intercepted for a touchdown. Great job again. First initial pressure by Chris Solomona getting a tip on the ball. And then we got two or three guys are in a position because of that tip ball. And this happened a couple times on the day, both to us and to our opponents. That the balls were tipped and they're just floating up there. You're sort of holding your breath here. But you see Chris coming off the edge, gets up, gets a piece of the ball. Ball's floating there, just past Anthony Trucks, right into Keith. Keith is, again, not as bad. I, I got him on the sidelines about this. I don't think it quite as bad as with the vision I saw. But Excitable moment, get your first touchdown of your career, but we got to be smarter about that. Will there be more discussions about that? Oh, or? well, he'll be. It'll be reinforced. Okay. Or Wolfpack, three incompletions and out. Oregon gets gets back with the football after that play and uh, trying to move the ball. Second and ten. Whitehead for four yards. Again, another one of those second and tens. And then Fife's going to get sacked here, and you have to punt. But still, you're feeling pretty good about things at 31-14. Well, yeah, except I again that that first screen pass should have been completed. That that's a waste of time to do it and then not catch the football and not make any yards. So again, great catch there, although they were holding on the play. Uh, mm -hmm. Give Nevada credit. Their receivers are very, very good. And the quarterback came in in the second half, did a great job. This was a big play. After the holding, it was third and fifteen, and Kreshmer gets seventeen and a first down. So again, one of those plays, if you can stop them, maybe the, the outcome of the game or the course of the game would get changed. They roll out and start moving the ball again. Yeah, little dump pass, and again, they are moving the football, got some momentum going up to our defense to shut them down. This was the weird one for me. It's third and one, he picks up about a yard, and the referee takes a look at it and says, well, I guess it's a first down. It's the end of the quarter. We'll pick the ball up. I, I know you requested a measurement, but he said he already picked the ball up. Yeah, I, you know, that was the second time. I did not feel it was there. I wanted a measurement, and uh, he gave me a reason. I, I understand. Talked a lot about the uh, intensity level, and the guys will hear from them after the game talking about that intensity, intensity level. Anything happen between the third and the fourth where you talk to the guys and, and say, let's bring it up a notch, or, or you just... Pretty much stick with what you what you have going. Well, I, I think it, it's up to the kids themselves. We can talk and yell and all those things, and we do the fourth quarter sign, which to us is that that right there says this is it. The game's on the line right now. Doesn't matter what the score is. We got to play. Turn up our intensity. Turn up our execution. The whole deal this week was uh, hustle, focus, and finish. Those three things. Those were our buzzwords for the week. Well, Nevada did a good job in the third quarter. They outgained Oregon about 120 to 20. So the Ducks have to hold on again for another victory. Coming up next, we've seen Whitehead, Shaw, and Vincent. Well, guess what? The Ducks have another running back who can do some damage. It's Kenny Washington making the most of his chance to play in crunch time. Oregon football with Mike Pilotti continues after these young ladies. And these messages, we're right back after this.
Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right into the fourth quarter highlights. Oregon and Nevada playing this one out in front of 56,500 people at Austin Stadium and some youngsters in their lightning yellow. Lots of folks wore yellow, and I think they want that yellow to continue for the Michigan game in two weeks. Nevada starts with it, driving. Heiser to Pudewell, 35 yards to the one-yard line. Got us on play action. Again, great saving tackle by Keith Lewis. And then Kreshmer over the top, and we've got a game 31 to 20 after the point after was no good. So the Ducks come back with it and have to try and move the ball. Shaw gets the ball here on the toss sweep for one yard, and uh, after he fumbled a little bit later, Coach, he didn't come back in the game. No, it wasn't his best game, and, and we needed to get a spark, and, and uh, again, we're going to make a change here later on. Five for Taylor for five yards on a three, third and eight play. Ducks have to punt. Now all of a sudden, they've got the momentum. They have 106 yards of offense in the half. They played with great intensity, and they're moving the ball. Heiser to Kreshmer for 14. Kreshmer for another six yards coming up right here. Anthony Trucks, that, that was the six yard. Then Anthony Trucks made the tackle, and then Kreshmer again for six. Yeah, he got strong as the game went on. He's a good receiver. Did a nice job for them as a receiver down the field. Heiser to Del McGee, 20 yards to the Oregon 11. They have a holding penalty that really hurt them, so they go back, and uh, Heiser gets some of it back to the 17, but they're forced to kick it because of the holding penalty. Yeah, and again, they had quite a few penalties in the game that obviously affected it. The kick is good, and it's 31-23. They're within a touchdown and a two-point conversion. Wolfpack had their chances after that, got an Oregon fumble, but went three incompletions and out after that. So Oregon with the ball. Kenny Washington coach into the game, four yards here. Well, Gary Campbell and I talked about what we're going to do with tailback, and uh, again, Terrence was down, Chris was out. Uh, Ryan had been somewhat ineffective and again had the fumble, so we decided we needed to go with somebody else. Kenny came in and gave us a spark. And then a big third down play. Kellen Clemens gets the first down. Sammy with a great block. Yeah, huge play. Get you out of the hole, get the first down, keep the clock. All the things you need to have happen, happen on that play. We'll go back and hand the ball off and try to get it up the middle. There's Washington. He's got a nice run inside. A great move to the 30 and inside out. Oh. Finley flag down at the 32-yard line. Kenny is actually the fastest back that we have and has probably some of the best moves. He just got to make sure that he takes care of the football. Does a great job here. Good vision. Nice little cut right there to make the guy miss. Wrap up the ball. Keep going. Face mask adds 15 more. Ball way out to the 47-yard line and then Clemens. Looking for Demetrius Williams, and they're going to find it for eight yards. Great job holding on to the ball. He got licked. Big time catch. Big time catch. I mean, that's the kind of strong hands. He knew he was going to get hit, caught it anyway. And then Washington for the first down. On that th second and two, he puts up the first down. And uh, Washington for another yard. And at this point, Coach, tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. The clock is moving. Yeah, and we're trying. we still got to be better pad level. I think right there we're just trying not to get beat. I got to knock people off the ball a little bit. Unfortunate there. We trip and stumble. I think great throwing pass by Kellen Clemens. We just aren't able to uh, capitalize on it. So you use a lot of clock, move the ball way out from your goal line, and then Martinez, again, Sammy's waiting for it. Yeah, that was obviously, I think, his best punt of the day. He got it up, turned it over, put it right where Sammy could catch it. Great execution on both sides. So they've got a long way to go to try and tie the game. They start at the three, Kreshmer for four yards, and they've got four and a half minutes to go in the game here. So maybe they think, hey, we'll just run our offense and see what we can do. He gets another three, Chris Solomona in on the stop, and then the pass is incomplete, and they have to punt the ball. They have no other choice. Yeah, nice job by Rodney Wood stripping the ball on the catch, because I thought that was a catch to start with. Oregon gets the ball back. Kenny Washington, they need a first down or two to end it. He had three, and then puts it away once and for all. He'll go back and hand it off. Big hole, Washington first down, and into the secondary. 40-yard line on his feet down to the 36-yard line. He wanted more. Big time play. Uh, Andy asked me if I wanted to run the football. I said yes with the time constraints. We spread him out, ran a basically a dive play to Kenny. Does a great job there. Great move to make people miss. Keep his feet. Gets through another one there and hangs on to the football. Awesome job. Big time play. 57 yards on nine carries for Kenny Washington. And the Ducks just work out the clock from there. A gain of four here for Kenny Washington. Then another running play and then he can kneel on it. Yeah, and uh, again, nice job just of driving the ball right there. That's what I like to see. Get those so, pads level forward. And with that, it's finally over. 31-23, another eight-point win. This one a win, yes, but the Ducks themselves not completely satisfied with their performance. I wouldn't really say it was a satisfying win because we put too much pressure on ourselves, and I don't think you know, saying that's what you know, saying we, we needed tonight. 
I mean, I think we could have, you know, said, kind of put these guys away earlier. And the pack, you know, saying is not really going to accept anything like this. The pack team is not going to accept anything like this. So we got to just, you know, saying do what we can do and put it away, you know, saying early as we can. Yeah, credit Nevada. They came out with some different looks. Uh, the surprise is a little bit than what they showed previously. And, uh, and they're a pretty good team, but we, we didn't play the way that we were expecting to. You know, I think we need consistent intensity, you know, throughout the game. I think we, we came out and Sam made the big reverse. We had a lot of momentum, scored on the next drive, and then just let off a little bit. I, I don't completely have an answer for it yet. We're going to find one this week. I know that before we go down to Arizona. Um, but uh, we'll have it by the time we start Pac-10. I think we just, I don't know, you know, we went out there, at the beginning of the game, we were all pumped up, and I think we just kind of died off a little bit. But, you know, we just got to learn how to play a full game. And, Keep playing hard the whole the whole time. Hopefully now they're they're very confident, you know, because I got in there, I got to have a good time today. You know, I had fun out there and I was juiced, so I made the most of what I got. We'll play better than this. I mean, Oregon has a history for playing uh, up to the par of our opponent. You know, like uh, when we play Colorado, we stepped it up. You know, some, I mean, it's not the way I like it, but sometimes when we play our, a lower opponent, we kind of go down to the level, and that's something we got to work on as a defense and an offense to just play to our potential the whole time. I was very surprised. They came out and fought hard. Um, uh, they, they ran a lot of plays we wasn't used to seeing. They ran a lot of plays to perfection as well, and uh, you got to give Nevada a lot of credit. The, the offense came out and fought hard in the first half, and uh, the D is, it was up to the defense to come out and uh, shut them down in the second half. Um, offense did great, you know, two games in a row, and uh, in order to compete in the Pac-10, we got to put a whole a complete game together. We're real uh, inconsistent right now with our intensity and, and the way we're approaching each quarter and each play. And, uh, you know, for us to change it, we just got to come together as a team. We got to figure out a way to keep that intensity going from the snap of the, you know, snap of the game to the end of the game. And if, if until we're able to establish that, we'll be squeaking by like we did today. Well, the overall feeling after the game, consistent intensity, which I thought was a great phrase by Kellen Clemens, and also mm -hmm. that complete game, just keep playing a complete game and not letting up. I agree. And that fact, that's sort of what I told him at halftime. It's sort of what I told the team at the end of the game. What we need to do is finish plays, finish the game. Uh, our intensity does wane a little bit. We've got to keep it going. We're a young team. We have 14 seniors. The reality is some of those guys are playing for the first time at the Pac-10 level, first time in Autzen Stadium. A lot of things, some freshman mistakes, but some also mistakes by some guys that have been there and, and should do better. In the uh, markings, it really doesn't matter because as you look down the road, a win is a win, 2-0, and and you head to, to Arizona in the Pac-10 play. We'll talk about that coming up a little bit later. And also, when we come back, well, you know him, you love him, and you won't believe how strong he is. Igor Olshansky defying the laws of physics when we come back here on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Sometimes when we do these shows, there's a story that seems to strike a chord with the public. This year, the phones have been ringing off the hook because Duck fans have heard that Igor Olshansky did the impossible on our preseason show, and people are pleading to see it again in living color. So we don't normally do this, but back by popular demand, Igor Olshansky, Oregon's strongest man. There's strength, and then there's strength. Igor Olshansky takes iron to a new level. Oregon's strongest man, benching 505 pounds, squatting 600. Forget Oregon's strongest man. Those are the kind of numbers that could land you on ESPN's zany World Strongest Man competition. He could easily do that. Could he pull a jet, do you think, down the runway? A <laughs> jet down the runway? Be fun to watch. Motorhome? <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Well, okay, why not? To find out, we put on our own World Strongest Man competition, starting out with a 29,000-pound, 48-foot, top-of-the-line, half-million-dollar Monaco motor coach. <laughs> Guys named Magnus reeling in a train caboose have nothing on Igor. And one day might see him face to face. I love that show. Hopefully, I can be on that show later on. I think he'd be perfect. He's uh, always the strongest guy on our team. Um, he looks like he'd be out there, he'd fit in real good, and he's Russian. It really doesn't seem that far fetched. In fact, it seems he's been prepared for that and for tossing aside 350 pound offensive linemen all his life. Immigrating not from Russia, like many of his teammates think, but from the Ukraine, 
I've always been this committed. I've always been a big kid. Um, I got into weightlifting when I started boxing early. Uh, we started doing push-ups, and uh, my dad made, made me do push-ups with my knuckles when, when I was really young. Uh, the secret to Igor, though, is not just strength. As you watch some of those World's Strongest Man contests, sometimes they, they do it with technique, sometimes they just do it with brute strength, but he's got a little bit of blend of both. A blend that shows up on Saturdays. It's crucial to uh, be able to transfer uh, your strength in the weight room to the field. I think that's where uh, a lot of people really succeed and really improve. That's something Igor has done steadily in his time at Oregon. At first, a project. With just one year of football experience, now into Oregon's next NFL sure thing. In the unlikely event that doesn't work out, someday, when you're flipping around the dial and the race is on, don't be surprised to see Igor. <laughs> holding his own and a 500-pound boulder across the finish line. I got to tell you, in the years that I've been doing this, that was the we were dying laughing. We were laughing so hard and that. He was a great sport about it. And uh, he's a strong guy. He's probably the strongest player you've ever seen at Oregon. I, I like the sandals, though. That was a you good like traction yeah. for that deal. He is <laughs> certainly one of the strongest athletes we've ever had. No and question. thanks to uh, Gray's Garden Center as well for the... Uh, fake rock that you put over your utilities. We didn't want I to hurt you. I would like to borrow. I could carry that one around a little bit. I don't know. <laughs> Igor doing a great job for the Ducks. And uh, when we come back, the Pac-10 opener. And oh my, the Arizona Wildcats. Oh, they had a little trouble Saturday night. We'll look at Oregon's trip to Tucson again, the third straight year in the desert for Oregon. Both times with good results, though. We'll talk about it coming up next on the show. All right, welcome back to Oregon Football with Mike Pilotti. Well, there were some unbelievable early season non-conference games on Saturday, one of which has left the Pac-10 talking about the Wazoo Cougars. Cougs on the road to meet Ty Willingham's Irish in South Bend. And Wazoo went up 19-0 early, but here's Julius Jones for the outside, back to the inside, and into the end zone for the touchdown. 23-19 Irish, they go up seven. That's when Matt Cagle drops back to pass, unloads, and watch the catch by Sammy Moore. Oh, what a grab. 34 yards. We're tied at 26. Drew Dunning, however, missed for Wazoo in OT. Nick Setta, however, would not from 40 yards out. And Notre Dame wins it in OT. 29-26, the final score in Los Angeles at the Coliseum. USC hosting BYU in its home opener. Matty Leiter drops back to pass. One of his three T passes finds Kerry Colbert, and he's off. 49 yards for the touchdown. The flag is on BYU. SC rolls to the 35-18 win. They're 2-0. Carl Durrell's career began in Boulder, UCLA, and the Buffs. Joel Klatt rolls, rolls, and finds Joe Koppenstein for the game-winning touchdown. 16-14, Buffs win at home and in Seattle. The Huskies taking on another Big Ten foe in Indiana. 28 unanswered for UW. All in the third. Six of them right here. 70 yards. Cody Pickett, Reggie Williams. See you later. Huskies win. 38-13, the final score. 195 yards of rushing attack for UW in that one. Joe Coach, back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Michael. Two weeks now in the Pac-10, Coach. Time to, I guess we can assess it a little bit. Uh, what do you see? Who do you like? Who's playing well? Well, obviously, SC's undefeated and they had some big wins. Uh, they're a good football team, and obviously they haven't missed the lack or the loss of Carson Palmer. Uh, other than that, I think it's still wide open. I think Arizona State was one of the ones that people were looking at because of the quarterback returning. Oregon State has, has faltered a little bit. Uh, you know, Washington State had a tough game. I had a chance to win at Notre Dame. I think that's a big win, a big opportunity for them. But who knows? I think it's still really early to tell. Mm -hmm. We'll start to get into some of the Pac-10 games here pretty soon. And for Oregon, on the road again next week at Arizona. And, uh, Coach, well, they were just absolutely drilled by LSU. Do you like playing a team that gets drilled like that, or would you rather have them coming in off a win? You know, is, does it matter? I, I don't know what matters. I, I don't like to play a team that, that gets beat like that simply because I think they got to regroup and they got to refocus. And you know they've got some they've got some athletes. Like Costa and O'Hara are both good quarterbacks. Costa is very mobile. Uh, you know they got a couple good running backs in Farmer and Bell. They've changed their defense, and I don't know how that is really going to impact. And we're going to look at a lot of film obviously this week. But they have some new coaches, too. So it's a, it's a whole different deal. It didn't work for them against LSU, so they may go back to the drawing board. Yeah, Nick Costa, of course, is the young man out of Aloha High School. He was a track star, runs a 10-400. But you can see he had all kinds of trouble in this game. And uh, 
LSU really scored at will, Coach. They were able to do anything they want, not even getting hit. I, I just saw, I didn't see the game till the very last, and so it was already out of hand at that point. Uh, I did see Arizona make some plays at the end. They battled till the end, but certainly they got they give up too many early, and I don't know why or how. I'm going to learn today. 59-13 to 13 was the final, and uh, Arizona just did not play a very good football game, and uh, they will not have a big crowd next week. And Oregon, again, heading to Arizona, third straight year. John McEvick says he can't figure this whole thing out either, but he knows if he can get a win at home, he might develop some excitement for his football team. Yeah, we return the favor of Oregon coming to play in Tucson by coming to Corvallis every year. So <laughs> right. Right. It's, our players keep wondering, when, when do we switch this thing? So winning at home is always a good thing. I, I know the Ducks have done a good job with that. And uh, for any good team, you have to be able to win at home. And if you play well at home and you win at home, then, of course, everybody gets excited about it. So John McEvick at Arizona, and uh, they've had some trouble, Coach. Yeah. I, you know, I think what he said, though, you're, you're expected to win at home. It's when you win on the road, I think, that you make a difference for yourself in the Pac-10. And going on the road to Arizona and uh, playing a team that uh, is expected to be at the bottom of the conference, so Devin Long said earlier in the show that sometimes the team plays to the level of competition. Do you agree with that, and do you think that Oregon needs to maybe uh, – crush some teams that maybe they should crush? I don't agree with it because I don't want to see it happen. I, I think it doesn't, and I say this, it doesn't matter who we play. We're still at the developmental stages. We're a work in progress. We need to take care of our own house first and not worry about the other team, whether they're the best team in the world or the worst team. We've got to play better. We've got to do certain things in terms of cleaning up penalties, cleaning up sloppy play on special teams, consistency on both offense and defense. If we do that, I think I'll feel really good no matter what happens. And health-wise, how's your team going into the first Pac-10 game? You know, we're actually going to get a couple of people back. I think Chris Vincent should be back this week, mm -hmm. and that'll help us. Uh, Haloti we still won't have, and that's not a big deal. We really, Ramon Reed uh, banged up a knee again. It wasn't a serious injury. It's been a continual thing. So I don't know that we're going to get him back or not, but we're relatively healthy. So Oregon heading on the road to Arizona. Another late night start, 7 p.m. Game on national TV, and uh, the Ducks trying to get off to a 3-0 and start again and get it themselves possibly into the national rankings. We'll have to wait and see. So a successful first two games, Oregon with the victory at Austin Stadium. For the coach, I'm Joe Johnsante. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Don't forget game replays on Comcast 14 around the state of Oregon at Sunday at 8 o'clock at night, so you have a chance to see the game over again. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Oregon Football with Mike Bellotti.